Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to do my reading wrap up. I read 18 books. So basically, most of you know I do mostly adult colouring videos, but I also read a lot. So that's why sometimes I might colour very little because I'm reading more than I'm colouring. Last month was a good month for both. Coloured 8 pages and I uh, read 18 books, which is exactly the same amount as what I bought. So I actually cancelled out my purchases by reading. Yay! So let's get started. If you're new, thank you for coming. I hope you like books because there's a lot of them. First book I finished in October is one, I mean, I've, I've read a few that I've had for a long time. <coughs> this one is called Causing a Good Thought for Marilyn. 1926 to 1954, The Hollywood Years by Stacey Eubank. So basically this tells, does what it says in tin. It tells Marilyn's story from 1926 to 1954. I'm still waiting for volume two, Stacey. I hope you do do it, because it's very well and in-depth research. There's a lot in here I didn't know. There's a lot of double and um, repetitiveness in some places when it comes to some of the articles she talks about. There's no photographs except for the one that's on the cover. However, Stacey's an artist as well. So rather than pay rights for photos, she's just drawn them. And I, I think they're lovely. Lovely little drawings. This is one of the books I would recommend you get, even though we're still waiting for volume two. News on Icon, if you're interested in Icon, is that there will be no volume three. Because the book's too big, it's going to be split into volumes three and four, and they're going to be released simultaneously before Christmas. So, yay. <coughs> yes, I gave this one, let me find it, four stars. Like I said, a bit repetitive, it's flimsy, but I did enjoy it. It's a bit of a state now, but I, yeah, I, I enjoyed that. And then the second book I finished was... Midnight's Children by Simon Rushdie. I gave this four stars as well. So this tells the story of a young man <coughs> who was born at the stroke of midnight on the day that India gained its um, independence from the United Kingdom, from Great Britain. Every child that was born within that, for that two hour span, nearer to midnight the better, has some special gift. So one's a witch who has real powers, somebody can change into a dog, somebody can fly, um, and so on. There's lots of different things that they can do. Now, with the Salim, our main character in this, he can hear people's thoughts if he wants to. He can tune in to what people are thinking. <coughs> but his other gift is that he can talk to all all of the Midnight's children, uh, out of the a thousand and so, there was from like so many hundred left, uh, I think 700 left, um, and he acts as a conduit between them so that they can all talk to each other. Uh, and it tells a story, now it does go back and tell the story of his grandparents, which is a really interesting story because all these characters are very important to Salim's upbringing and his story. I, find, I found it was beautifully written, absolutely fantastic. Um, I've never read Salman Rushdie before, but now I do want to read some more. I mean, it's hard going, it is very hard <coughs> going because it's very in depth, it's very dense, but the story itself is so beautiful that I couldn't help but enjoy it and I savoured it. I think it took me a long time more because I was savouring it rather than just reading it for the sake of, oh, I gotta read a Salman Rushdie. I just really enjoyed it. And this is a beautiful Everyman's edition as well. So, yes, we'll be reading more at some point. In September, uh, Peter James's <coughs> new Roy Grace book came out. And as you know, I collect these. I haven't got them all, but I am slowly getting them. I always buy the new one when it comes out. I used to get it for my birthday because it used to come out in May. My birthday's in June, but they moved it to September. Picture You Dead tells the story of a couple who go to a car boot sale. They buy a picture. Not because they like the picture, but because they like the frame. They discover there is another painting underneath it, and it is a missing work of art. 
it could be worth millions it's one of four um and something like 10 years previously <coughs> one of the other four came up uh, with an um, art dealer but the art dealer was murdered and the painting stolen this couple are now in danger because this particular person that wants this painting is after it and he'll do anything to get his hands on it we've got murder we've got cold case we've got art theft we've got forgery there's a character in who makes his 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 living copying paintings and sending them because he's so good he signs them now by himself and people will buy them because they are copies by this particular artist <coughs> but can Roy Grace get to the bottom of this old murder because he's investigating the cold case while linking it to this new mystery with this painting that has just been discovered I gave that one a four stars I do love Roy Grace I do love Peter James Mortal Monarchs by Susie Edge you saw this in my haul this is about the deaths of the kings and kings <coughs> kings and queens of England and Scotland gruesome funny and because I know Susie Edge not personally but I know of her I know Dr Edge on TikTok I'm one of I follow her account I love her videos I can actually hear her telling me this I can hear her speaking it I know she has actually done the audiobook as well which I might actually have to get because if she's reading it I want to listen to it so next year I might listen to it on audiobook as well five stars for that because it's gruesome and I love gruesome and then uh, paranormal stories <coughs> by Jamie King supernatural tales and unexplained mysteries from across the world You've got witches parallel universes UFOs cryptids etc ghosts mythical creatures zombie werewolves and vampires time travel blah 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 the lot is in here it's a very thin volume very quick read I would like more detail on the stories but maybe that's all he could find some of the stories I know and I know there's more to them but I think it's intended as a brief overview so I only gave it three stars but it was okay nothing wrong with it, it was a good read <coughs> <coughs> another uh, one for the Ripper collection is the Bank Holiday Mur Murders by Tom Westcott Tom investigates as to whether or not the first two Whitechapel murders Emma Smith and Martha Tabron could they have actually been victims of the serial killer we call Jack the Ripper today back in Victorian times back when this was happening they were considered to be victims of the Whitechapel murderer that we call Jack but then as time went on because the method of their murders was different to the what we call the canonical five they were discounted however Tom makes a case of why they should be considered vic Ripper victims and they could well be Ripper victims in the fact that serial killers just don't go out there and start causing the havoc Ripper Jack did they start slowly and escalate so he does make a very very good case and I gave it four stars classic of the month was HG Worlds is, excuse me, War of the Worlds. Isn't this a gorgeous cover from Penguin Cloth Band Classics? Not that, you know, we never judge a book by its cover, but if you've got a beautiful cover, doesn't it make reading it so much nicer? And um, these covers, some of these covers are just beautiful. This is stunning. So the War of the Worlds. We all know the story of War of the Worlds in which Martians come to Earth to try and take over the world and then are killed by things that we take for granted like common cold like the common cold more than likely that's what it's generally agreed to be that they were killed because they had no way to fight off no immune system against our colds but this tells the whole story you always forget with War of the Worlds because we always see American versions such as we hear the HG Wells version or we see the Tom Cruise film that we forget that it was actually a British story it's set in Surrey <laughs> and London <coughs> and you, you forget that so it's nice to go back to the actual source material and read it I really enjoyed it, it was a very easy read actually very enjoyable 
I mean, obviously I knew what was going to happen. I knew they were going to die, uh, that we would survive the Martian invasion because of the cold, whatever it was. But it's easy to forget about the, the way it was written and, and there was more, there's more to the story than just the Martians invading. I guess with like with Tom Cruise, he goes to try and find his wife or his ex-wife or something, his kid. I don't know. I can't remember uh, seeing it, but it's in the cinema, I think. But this is the original. And the original is always best. Take that on. <coughs> Take that on board, Joyce Carol Oates, and your horrible biog non-biography blonde, your fictional account of Marilyn Monroe, which was turned into that horrific, awful film. We won't go into that. By Andrew, I'm a misogynistic incel, Dominic. And on to our Stephen King of the Month, which was the Colorado Kid. This is so slim. Colorado Kid is the story of three reporters. One is a trainee and two are veterans. And the veterans are telling her the story of uh, this body that's found off the coast of Maine. Um, he has no ID on him. And nobody knows who he is or where he's come from. Much like the story of that guy that they found on the beach in Australia. It's very similar to that. Except for in this book they do find out who he is. But there is still a mystery there. Which is a non-mystery. And that's why he actually was there. He had no reason to be there. How did he get there? And they, they suppose, they, you know, they, they go over how they, he probably could have got there. Could he have killed himself? Why would he have done it? But yeah, I mean, it was fascinating. Not, I mean, it, it's not a supernatural, but it is mysterious. And then I explained. So this was part of the three book box set, Hard Case Crime, along with Joyland and Later. And it seems like years ago I read Later, but it was only like August. <coughs> but I enjoyed that and I gave that one only three stars. It wasn't my favourite of the set. I think Joyland was my favourite out of the three. Then I read Taylor Jenkins Reads Malibu Rising. Now this is set in the early 80s and I guess it is a Hollywood set story. It's in Malibu. Um, Nina Reva's father is a, a singer from the 50s who's still singing or the 60s. That's sort of like in the vein of Sinatra and uh, Martin. So the later... Hollywood stuff doesn't really interest me but this is a really good story it starts off in the past and comes forward much like um the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo does but it's obviously more set in 1983 but it was a really good story I really in enjoyed it and I'm glad that the the Nina Nina got to do what she really wanted to do in the end I, I was really pleased with that and she went somewhere I know which is Madeira <laughs> she wanted to go to Madeira to go surfing. I never went surfing in Madeira, but Madeira is a lovely island. Lovely Portuguese island. Of course, uh, last month was a month I read a book that I cried from the beginning to the end, all the way through. And that is Terry Pratchett, Pratchett's A Life with Footnotes, the official biography by Rob Wilkins. Rob Wilkins was Terry Pratchett's personal assistant through met through the last years of his life and he now helps run and manage the Terry Pratchett estate, the literary estate with his daughter Rihanna. That's Terry Pratchett's daughter Rihanna, not, not Rob's. And literally it is the story of Terry Pratchett's life. There's bits in there that made me laugh, they made me cry. I went, I didn't know that. I mean, for instance, I knew he lived in Wiltshire but I didn't know he moved to Bristol. I, I didn't know he, he worked at Bedminster Down. I knew he sort of worked in the area but I didn't know it was Bedminster Down. I didn't know he lived in the West uh, and all that stuff. I didn't know that. When I said he moved to the West, I, my dad said, oh, what, who did he live with? <laughs> what was his uncle's name? <coughs> that sort of area my family came from. There are a lot of laughs in here because it is about a very funny man. Oops. But it's also very sad because that very funny man died far too young, sadly. And... John Lloyd has a quote on the back that says, Of all the dead authors in the world, Terry Pratchett is the most alive. And he is. I get that five stars. So I'm, I'm, even thinking about it makes me want to cry. Another dead author. Most of the authors. Most, a lot of authors dead. Is uh, Terry Goodkind. Another Terry. Uh, this is 
uh, the Nikki Chronicles book three. There's only one more in the series, unfortunately. <coughs> and fortunately, he completed the story before he passed. This tells the story of a Sister of the Dark, Nikki, who is spreading the word of, word of Richard Rowell among, along the Old Kingdom, trying to unite all the towns, cities and villages under the Lord Rowell's reign, under Richard's reign. Um, and she is at a city that has been shrouded and hidden for hundreds of years, or 1500 years, a long time, by wizards. <coughs> and they... Um, the shroud has fallen. Outside of the city gates was a frozen army turned to stone by one of their wizards. But as that wizard fled, because whatever, he was um, causing uprising because it was all about, like most places, the richer, they're most important, they're slaves, they're, they're the least, they don't get a say and so on. And he was trying to stop this, but he was thinking only of himself, even though it did help the people because there was an uprising. He reversed the magic on the Stone or Army, who are, want to continue and take down Ildakar, which is the city. Hence why it's called Siege of Stone, because the people containing the, sea, the siege are made partly of stone. And I don't think it's until the end they become fully flesh. Again. Can you hear? Bless her. I don't know what they're doing. <coughs> oh, need another drink. And I gave that one okay. four stars. Back to Terry Pratchett, and I read one of my favourites of his works, which is Weird Sisters. I like this because I played Nanny Og in it at the Dolman for Newport Playgoers, oh, a long time ago. Last production I was ever in. This is his Macbeth retelling. So, in which case, in this case, um, the three witches are good obviously it's Nanny Og, Granny Weatherax and Magrat Garlic and <laughs> sorry the king has been murdered by an evil relative his son has been whisked away <coughs> by a loyal servant given to the witches who in turn give him to a traveling um, troop of actors who take him with them he grows up as an actor as the, uh, sorry, I'm looking at the picture on the front and laughing. As the, um, oh, I've lost the plot. Time passes slowly. Um, the land grows to hate the king and the new king, duke, the duke, whatever his name is, Felmet, Lord Felmet. And they want the witches to do something about it, but they can't because it's meddling. So what they do is they move the whole of the, the, the town, the village, Lanka, Lanka. Lanka, rhymes with uh, Lanka, 15 years into the future so that the boy Tom John is grown up and he can come back and claim his crown but it doesn't all go to plan because <coughs> Falmet sends the fool off to Ankh, Norpork to get a troop of players to write a play telling the story of the murder, Macbeth, basically but not right. And then he comes back and it all goes a little bit pear-shaped. I love the cover because this shows Nanny Og in the stocks. Now Nanny Og here is not, not chubby enough in my opinion. She's not fat enough because she's supposed to be quite jolly. She's everybody's granny. Nanny rather. <coughs> but yeah. Five stars. This rank has not changed. This, this rating has never changed. It's always been a five stars. I love this book. I'm going to change my battery and we'll be back. Okay guys, we've just hit the battery again. Um, there's books everywhere in this house. Let's carry on, last few. We've got, what, how many we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Come on, anyway. Next on the list is As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson, book three in Good Girls Guide to Murder series. I've enjoyed this series and I actually gave this one, where's it gone? Five stars, I think it's the best one. Somebody said they didn't like this one, but I, because uh, they didn't I think it was as good as the other two, but I actually really enjoyed it. So Pip's, Pip is being stalked by somebody. Um, she's haunted by the death of Stanley Forbes in the previous book. 
<coughs> what she needs to do is she thinks if she can solve who the stalker is or the person who's stalking her is she can lay to rest the ghosts of the past it is all linked they do all link in together however there is a connection between a stalker and a local serial killer who was allegedly caught um, around the same time as um, the first story started that is the the death of whatever her name was Belle Andy Bell around that time but was it the right person could it have been somebody else it this is a lot darker I know people said they weren't sure about reading this because it's so dark compared to the other two and yes it is it's very dark but it is so good I do recommend it if you've read the other two you have to finish it off you have to complete the story <coughs> otherwise you don't know all the answers to what happens in book one it is all interlinked it all makes sense when you when you do it and the ending is really good so I would say you have to read this book I also read now I'm into a few books that I've had hanging around for quite a while although one of them one of them is from this year but the rest are, uh, uh, are really old that I've had on my huge TBR for a while I've read a few of those it's like Tony Parsons the Slaughterman so uh, a wealthy family has been murdered in their gated community but one of their children, has, their youngest child, is now missing. Max Wolf is led to a killer who was tried and convicted of killing his ex-girlfriend's brother and father and was known as a horseman just simply because of the way he killed. However, this person, it says old and dying. He's not old, he is dying. I mean, old makes it sound like he's 70 or 80. In fact, he's in his uh, 40s. <laughs> it's like, he's like my age. <coughs> 40s or 50s, he's not old. So can it really be him? But Max just wants to find this child and stop the killer before he kills somebody else. This was a really good book. I don't know why I put this off for so long, but it was a very, very good book. I gave it four stars and I really, really enjoyed it. Oh, as good as, as good as that, I, I don't know if I said, I said it was a five star. And I would advise if you find a copy of this, pick this up. Very good. I, it's not what I'm going to keep, but I enjoyed it. This is, the next one is called Airhead and it's by Meg Cabot. I assume this is like um, middle grade YA. I say more well, YA, it's a bit older, but this is the author that wrote Princess Diaries. Um, and basically, it's the story of this girl named Emerson Watts <coughs> and another girl called um, Nikki Howard. Nikki Howard is a model, and Emerson Watts is just a, a geeky tomboy schoolgirl who's a bit of a nerd, not interested in how she looks. And then one day, something happens and she wakes up in Nikki's body. Now, I really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars, I think. Yeah, four stars. It was a good, fun read. And I really want to read the sequel, which is called Being Nikki. So I'm gonna have to try and track that one down just to, to, to read it. Cause yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was fun. And it's how Emerson comes to terms with being Nikki and they explain what happened. I figured it, pretty much figured it out myself with that before I got there, but. Next was James Patterson, Mary Mary. This is an Alex Cross story. He's on holiday in California when he gets a call that a famous actress has been killed outside her home in Beverly Hills and he's been asked to go in and have a quick look. The Los Angeles Times receives an email describing the murder in detail, signed by a Mary Smith. While everybody is saying, oh, it's a female murderer, Alex is not convinced. He thinks it's a man using a woman's name. He keeps, the killer keeps killing major Hollywood players, including a Los Angeles Times entertainment editor. But can Alex not only find out who the killer is, but save his own family from being split up forever? Not because the killer's going to get them, but because... 
his ex-girlfriend's threatening to take his son away forever. His young son. <coughs> you will have to excuse me. Uh, right. Again, I'm not going to keep that one, but I really enjoyed it. And another one I enjoyed was Harlan Coben. The words, I love Harlan Coben. His first one wasn't the best. I didn't enjoy that one as much. His very first novel, but then it, it was his first. This one, however, is absolutely fantastic. Another four stars from me. <coughs> so what happens in this book is... I've got to read it. 20 years previously, four teenagers go into the woods at summer camp and never come back. The brother of one of them, Paul, becomes a prosecutor when suddenly a man turns up dead that has a link to Paul in the sense that it has a lot of clippings and information about him. When Paul goes to view the body, he looks at them and realises that this is one of the people who disappeared that night, Gil Perez. He is not, he did not die that night. He walked out of the woods. So, could it be that Camille, his sister, who was one of the four who disappeared, is still alive? <coughs> However, a body or the remains of a body are found in the woods near to where the other people died. Could that be Paul's sister or could it be somebody else who's close to him? This was a really good book and again four stars. I do like Harlan Coben. I don't keep Harlan Cobens. Maybe one day I'll collect him in paperback like I do Stephen King but right now I'm not keeping them. No. What I will be keeping because <coughs> They're dead creepy. And it's been on the shelf for a long time. It's Slade House by David Mitchell. <coughs> so basically, Slade House only appears once every nine years on the last Saturday in October. Guess what day I decided to read this book? The last Saturday in October. So that was pretty creeped out. So, but fortunately, it didn't fall on the ninth year, um, which would be 24. 2024. So I'm two years early, which is great. And every nine years, somebody disappears. They go into the house and they never come out. It's dead creepy. Can somebody ever survive Slade House's mystery? Why are people disappearing there? What is going on in this building? It is creepy. It is brilliant. It was four stars. Like I said, it freaked me out that I was reading it on the day it's actually set, even though, fortunately for me, it's not the year it was set. But <laughs> it was scary. It was really creepy. I am keeping that. And the last book is another one I'm going to keep because I really, really enjoyed it. Again, it's a book I've had since it was actually published because I've got the hardback. It was published in 2015, I think. Is it 2015? <coughs> Let me just check. Was it 2015? I can't even see the date. Where's the date? Oh, 2016. So, still six years though. And that's The Muse by Jessie Purton. Why did I leave it so long? It's like The Essex Serpent. Well, that's still up on the shelf to be read fairly soon, but I don't know why it took me so long to read this book. It was flipping brilliant. Another four star read. <coughs> So this tells the story of a young lady named Adele Bastine who moves from Trinidad to London in 1967 with her friend Synth to find a better life. Now obviously as a person of colour in 1967 it wasn't going to be easy. She wanted to be a writer and she is a writer. She wanted to become a secretary so she would learn more about writing and art. Um, but all she could get was a job in Dolce's, which is a shoe shop, um, which she didn't really like. <coughs> However, she gets a job eventually in a place called the Skelton Gallery. She's employed by a woman named Marjorie Quick who sees something special in her. Around this time, her friend Cynthia gets married and on at Cynthia's wedding, she meets a guy named Lawrence or Laurie Scott who has a painting. He wants to take it to the Skelton Gallery and get it appraised. He wants to know more about it. And it comes, turns out that it is by an artist who is just becoming very, very famous. 
was only known to have painted four paintings. However, that is not all there is to it because Marjorie knows something about this painting that nobody else does. It's also partially set in 1936, which is when this painting was painted. <coughs> and it goes back and tells the story of Isaac um, and the Schloss family, Olive, Olive Schloss. Obviously we're coming up to, there's a Spanish Civil War going on. It's coming up to World War II. They are obviously of uh, a Hungarian. Um, now, if you're like me, you probably figured out that Schloss and Scott are quite close together. And, it, you know, I, so I figured out that part of the plot quite early that Laurie Scott is a member of the Schloss family because his mother is Oliver's mother and she moves to England and changed and, and, and his father's allegedly the father as well. And they moved to England and changed the name to Scott because obviously Schloss is, Schloss is quite Germanic. And during that time, a lot of people with those sorts of names changed them to an anglicised version <coughs> to avoid being, you know, can't think of the word. Um, but that part of the plot I figured out. I didn't figure it all out, but I came pretty close. Um, but I still loved it. I really enjoyed it. Um, I was rooting for Adele from the very start. I really wanted her to become a writer, and she did, thanks to Marjorie. She became a published writer and this isn't the first time that Marjorie has done something like that. As you will find out if you read the news. I loved it. I recommend it. It's an absolutely fantastic book. So those are all the books. I actually read it in um, October. In October. Gosh, we're near the end of the year already. Wow. My favourite book would be um, the Terry Pratchett one. I'm going to say it. The, the biography of Terry Pratchett. Sad. Made me cry but I loved it. I loved it. So I now know of a charity shop near me who was selling books at a rate of knots for 20 books for a pound. I haven't been up there because I'm avoiding the place like the plague because I've got so many books. But I figured I could get some for my mum. And I know the person running it so I can always take some of the books I don't want down there. And that's probably what I'm going to do is take them down there. Wow. Well, a ride. I enjoyed that. Let's see what happens in... November and how many books can I read? I've only got 20 books to read before I hit my target for the year and then I'm into extras. So I'm really pleased with how well it's going. Um, yeah, and I will let you know more about, uh, I don't even know what I'm saying. I will let you know there'll be another haul and another wrap up of books at the end of the month. I'm really not with it, you know. I'll see you very soon. Bye, guys.